This is the Blink Mini 2. It comes with a few upgrades from the first generation. This camera is now weatherproof. Wait a second here. Not so fast. While it can be weatherproof, you have to spend $10 more for the weatherproof power plug. So, what else is new with this? Stick around and find out more. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to DIY Read. My name is Reed, and if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Blink's new Mini 2 camera. We're going to see if it's worth ditching the Blink Mini or if this Blink Mini 2 fits your security needs. The Blink Mini 2 comes in two different colors. It's got black and white. I picked up the black model, as you can see here, and it is a flat black finish to it. The white model also is a flat finish. The Blink Mini 2 retails for $40 by itself or $50 if you want to include the weatherproof power cable. So it's about $10 more than the Blink Mini or $20 more if you want to be weatherproof. I'll leave a link to both these products in the description below if you're interested in checking them out. So everything that you get in the box is the camera itself. The pedestal mount, which also allows you to screw it in so that way it's mounted on the wall. Mounting screws, indoor power cord, power brick, and quick start guide. Now, if you choose to buy the optional weatherproof power adapter, it comes with a 13 foot cable, wire anchors, drywall anchors, and mounting screws. And last, you also have a quick start guide for this one too. As far as the design of the camera, it's definitely an improvement. As you can see here, it has a flat black design and they have added a spotlight above the camera lens. They moved the speaker from the top to the back of the camera and this is probably done for weatherproof, well, at least weatherproof rating. And the charging cable is now, it used to be a micro USB, now it's a USB-C, which is a nice touch. At the bottom, there's a huge reset button and a spot for a mounting stand. Now moving to the specs of the Mini 2, it has a wider field of view at 143 degrees, 1080p at 30 frames per second, like the first generation. It weighs a little bit more at 65 grams. It has two-way audio and the operating temps are between 20 degrees Celsius and 45 degrees Celsius. It also has Alexa support, just like the first one. Now, you can get 30 days of unlimited cloud recordings as a free trial. However, when that's done, you'll have to pay for a subscription fee, or if you want to, you can buy, buy another device, a sync module too, to store up your videos locally. Of course, I hate paying for subscription fees, and I always recommend your recordings local. That being said, I hate buying another device to have this capability. Here's where it gets a little squirrely. There are a few features that you're not gonna get unless you pay for the subscription. Those features are, you're not gonna get a thumbnail and it won't have person detection if you don't pay for the subscription fee. May not be a big deal to you, but if it is, just remember, you're gonna have to pay extra money here. Let's take a quick peek at the quality of the video during the daytime, nighttime, and color night vision with the spotlight on. This is the quality of the video during the daytime. This is what you're gonna get when it's sunny outside. And you're gonna get the audio quality that you're hearing right now. Let's take a quick run through the mobile app and show you some of the features it has. Okay, so here we are in the app. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the play button and this will give us a live view of what's going on with the camera outside. Right now I have it in my backyard. You're gonna hear the wind. It's kind of windy today. We'll turn, off the, we'll turn off the volume right now. But now you can see I have a turn on light or turn off light option. I wish this, this option would uh, show what the current status of the spotlight is. In that way you can say turn off spotlight or turn on spotlight right now. I don't, I don't know what the status is. I can't really tell. It doesn't even tell me. At the bottom, you can save the recording as what's going on right now. You can tap to unmute. And then there's more options here. So we're going to go to more. And they have an extended live view. Right now it's turned off. As apparently this is new. This allows you to live view for a lot longer than, I think, uh, 30 seconds. So we're going to settings. Under general settings, they're, they're going to show you the firmware that's current, when the status LED is working, which is when it's recording. You can change the Wi-Fi and network strength. It'll tell you what that is. Under motion settings, it'll allow you to turn it on and off. Uh, you can go to type, all motion, or per, per, person, not pet protection, uh, person detection. 
right now uh, you have to have the subscription fee for that. And then also sensitivity of that motion zones, which is really nice. Um, this allows you to set up different zones for motion. That way it doesn't catch. Say I can exit out of, um, well, that's the activity zones, but I can do, I can exit out that tree right there. If the tree's moving quite a bit and it's catching that instead. And then also retrigger time, which I have it set for 10 seconds. This means it just takes a little bit less time to retrigger to go for another recording. Video and photo settings. Right now, I currently have it set for recording 15 second clips. You can adjust that there. Video quality. Um, in most of their battery cameras, you would set this up to optimal or whatever you wanted, depending on the battery settings. But since it's a plug in camera, you want the best. Of course, you do. You can set it to end the clip early if the motion does stop. You can flip the video around so that way you've got mounted up upside down. You can flip the, the view of it. Night vision, this is where you can set up the night vision for color night vision uh, or, or like turn the spotlight on when there's motion and that way you can have color night vision going on or you can just have a black and white. You can have the infrared sensitivity, you can change that and then photo capture on. Audio settings, this is just speaker volume setting, simple as that. Lighting settings, this is the brightness of the light. Um, you can use it so that way if the motion is acti activated, it turns on the light. Kind of a deterrent for anybody that comes into your area. Privacy settings. This gives you allows you to do privacy zones. Um, you can turn off recording. You can also do turn off audio streaming if you wanted to. Um, just gives you those few options there. And that's pretty much it on the app. Now, here are my final thoughts on this. If you already have the Blink camera set up and are looking at adding additional cameras, this may be a great option for you. This will add, or at least allow you to add an additional inside or outside camera as it's got a wider field of view. And it also has an added spotlight up top to help make it a little bit more uh, easy to record. That being said, if you're looking at buying your first security camera, I strongly suggest looking at other options as there may be a better fit for you out there for similar pricing. Overall, the Blink camera system is pretty easy to set up and easy to install. And doesn't require a whole lot of skill, which I know can be something for a lot of people. If you found this video helpful, please leave me a like and feel free to ask any questions in the comment section down below. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing for tech reviews, home automation, and home and automotive how-to videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.